Welcome in. I am the Crypto Bull God, and in today's video, I'm here to discuss the six historically significant Bitcoin topic signals that I plan to use for my exit strategy to tell me when Bitcoin is most likely topping, with all coins following shortly thereafter. If you appreciate the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, drop me a comment, and make sure you click that bell icon for all notifications to know when I go live each and every single weekday for my daily live stream all in the charts. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TradingView. It's one word. It's Crypto Bull God. Now, you always know I'm never providing financial advice, never providing any financial advice. Personal financial decisions are up to you. Before we get into the video here, and I'm really passionate about this video because I have been invested in this market since 2018. I have learned a lot of things along the way. And I'm also coupling that with having a background as a mathematician, statistician. I'm a data person, right? There's a lot of talk in the market right now about what we should or shouldn't be looking to tell us if the markets are topping. One, two words of caution. One, it will be a major mistake if you rely on one chart or one indicator because you're implicitly stating that there's certainty within that chart. And if there's anything I teach you on this channel, there are no certainties in anything in life besides living and dying. And so you have to take the charts for probabilistic statements. This is why I have created six indicators that are telling me if historically speaking, we are in an opportune time to sell. And this gets to my second point. Don't overcomplicate your life. Don't overcomplicate your life and have too many pricing indicators that you're looking at or charts. The reason it took me a while to get this video out is I really wanted to land on five and I ended up having six topping signals. So without further ado, let's get into it. Bitcoin topping signal number one, the pie cycle. Now, the pie cycle is viewed on a daily chart. And the easiest way to explain this chart is that we have a daily chart with candlesticks and we have two simple moving averages. A slow period moving average, which is the highest moving average, and the fast period moving average, which is below the slow period moving average. The idea is, and historically speaking, when the when the fast moving period average has caught up to the slow period moving average and intersected it, touched it, that is historically spelled that Bitcoin was at its blow off top. Let's get into it. So if you do catch my daily live stream all in the charts, click that bell icon for all notifications. This chart should look very familiar to you. This is the Pi cycle chart. We have our fast period moving average, which is the orange line and we have the slow period moving average which is the blue line now the blue horizontal or excuse me the blue vertical line here denotes when that fast period moving average touched the slow period moving average and the green line symbolizes when we top so you can see there's only a one day differential because again this is we're looking at this on a daily so you can see once these two moving averages intersected there was a one day delay uh, prior to the blow off all-time high top in Bitcoin. If we fast forward in time and we go to spring of 2021, very similar occurrence here. You can see that here is where we touched. Two days later, we had our highest price blow off top. This was the impulsive top at 64,900. Of course, you will note when we did hit 69,000, note how uh, this didn't fire because this was part of a corrective structure, which I continue to hit on. It was not an impulsive top. So if we fast forward through time, we can see that right now we're hanging out right, a, right atop this uh, slow period moving average. This fast period moving average is starting to catch up. So we're going to be watching to see where this interacts and um, when this triggers. Bitcoin topping signal number two, the USDT dominance chart. Now this chart, we're gonna take a look at on a monthly view. The general idea behind this chart is the USDT dominance chart represents the portion of the market that is held in a stable coin. A stable coin dominance, how many people are holding that, how much value there is, it's gonna be at a very increased level when people are sitting on their capital waiting to inject it into the market, okay? So more during bearish times. 
the dominance is going to be very low when people are deploying their capital and not wanting it to sit in a stable coin, but wanting to invest it and take risk in the market. Now, in particular with this chart, what we're going to take a look at is the relationship on the monthly with the relative strength index. Let's get into it. All right, so let's clearly denote what is indicated within this chart. Now, the orange vertical lines here on the USDT dominance price chart, this is indicating when Bitcoin had its blow off top. Now, keep in mind, this is a monthly chart. So the topping in, in this case, for instance, this candlestick here represents December of 2017. So I'm saying at this point on the USD top, USDT dominance chart, Bitcoin had topped this month. Bitcoin topped in June of 19. Bitcoin topped in April of 2021. And what we can do is we can look at the corresponding descending areas of price confluence on the relative strength index. So you can see the same time we touched this line, we, we had a blow off top in Bitcoin. When we touched the descending line here, it was one month later, we had a blow off top in Bitcoin. When we touched the line here, which was in March of 2021, okay, so we touched, just to make sure that I'm being clear, what I'm saying is we touched this line here, just like we touched it here and here for the first time in March of 21, where we topped in Bitcoin the following month in April of 2021. So something I'm going to be watching very closely is obviously this indicator, and you can see I hypothetically have an area where we might bottom out at, which is between May and September, based on how this relative strength index is trending down. So what I will be watching for, and when this trigger will file, fire green, is when the relative strength index touches the bottom of this trend line. Bitcoin topping signal number three. This is an on-chain metric, the MVRV Z-score or the market value, realized value, Z-score. Now, in layman's terms, this is a super easy concept to understand. We're looking at the market value of Bitcoin, which is today's price, and we're comparing that to the realized value. The realized value is, on average, how much everyone paid for their Bitcoin. So when we have a really high Z-score, an MV, uh, MVRV Z-score, that means the value of Bitcoin today is a lot higher than most people paid for it. When it's really low, it means that the, the price of Bitcoin today is very low compared to what everyone paid for it, right? So during euphoric and bullish times, that score is going to be real high. During bearish times, it's going to be really low. Let's get into it. All right, some on-chain data. So we're looking at the MVRV Z-score or the market value realized value Z-score. Now, there is a clear descending area of resistance on this trigger. You can pull this up on TradingView. The indicator is right here. You can look it up yourself. But when we touched this area and when we touched this area, that is when we had our blow-off impulsive top, okay? So... It makes sense just like we would do with price until proven otherwise. Now, I'm not telling you the Z-score can't come up and clear this descending area of resistance. But for me, exercising logic and wisdom, I'm saying, hey, when we get up and we get close and touch, when we actually touch this black line here, that is triggering a green cell signal. Again, the whole premise behind having a handful of historically significant indicators is there's not one indicator that's going to tell you with certainty when to sell. It's leading you towards confluence and the idea that it's smart, <laughs> the more of these that begin to fire green, that you should start selling. Maybe we come up here and we top right at this line or maybe we clear it and Bitcoin goes up another 5 or 10%. It, it doesn't matter. The whole point is it, it's exercising wisdom and logic to say that when we get to this descending area of resistance, that is when the trigger is going to fire greed. Now, you can pull this MVRVZ score up in trading view. You can also, I like the website. You can see it. Uh, actually, you can't see it. It is look into Bitcoin. It's right here, actually. Look into Bitcoin.com, and they have a lot of different on-chain metrics on here that you can take a look at. So you can pull it up here as well. But that is what I will be looking for here. Just like with price data, until proven otherwise. I'm going to be logical and conservative, and when this Z-score comes up to this descending area of resistance, that is triggering a sell signal.
Bitcoin topping signal number four. This is the second and last on-chain metric. This is the Pule multiple. I love this metric because in many ways, it's really specific to the technology of blockchain and Bitcoin. The Pule multiple, and the, the reason that I included this in here, is it's not looking necessarily at the market value of Bitcoin like the MVRV score. This takes a look at value relative to a miner's perspective. So essentially what it's looking at is miner profit today relative to miner profit on average for the past year. Again, again, we're looking at today's profit levels for miner. How profitable is it to be a Bitcoin miner versus how profitable it's been over the average of the past year. Now, when this value was really high, we're during a real peak time and Bitcoin has its blow off top. When it's super low, it's very advantageous to be buying Bitcoin. Historically speaking, let's get into it. All right, so looking at the Pule multiple. So the green vertical lines here are where we had our impulsive euphoric top, okay? And you can see they coincide with when we touched in relative fashion, this descending area of resistance. Well, what do you notice? If we look at the Pew multiple, we've already cleared the descending area of resistance. So what I would say to this is we cannot use the descending area of resistance as our gauge to indicate when this indicator will fire green for a sell signal. Instead, what I have done is I have signaled a key zone of resistance and a euphoric value within this indicator, okay? So when we get into this red zone between 3.54 and 7.2, that is what is going to signal a sell signal to me. So we will turn the indicator from red to green when the Pew multiple, if the Pew multiple touches anywhere in here. It doesn't need to go all the way up here. It just needs to touch this prior area of price confluence here. And again, you can pull this up into lookintobitcoin.com, the Pew multiple. Bitcoin topping number five, the relative strength index and the MACD. Now for this one, we're actually going to be utilizing two charts for this one indicator. We will first look at the weekly chart, the Bitcoin weekly chart, and we'll assess the price indicators, both MACD and relative strength index and how that corresponds with impulsive tops. And secondly, we'll be going in and just looking at the RSI on the monthly chart for Bitcoin. Let's get into it. All right, guys, topping signal indicator number five. This is a really important one. This is really going to explain whether or not you're seeing a true impulsive top within the market, in my opinion. Not only will the volume tell you that, when you look at volume, volume precedes price, but the relative strength index in particular will tell you that. So there's a couple things going on in this chart. First off, I keep changing the color shading, which is actually quite humorous. But these purple, uh, you can't see them too well there. These purple vertical lines indicate when the blow off top happened. So just a quick correction here. The purple vertical lines do not show where the impulsive blow off top occurred. What it does show is the intersection with the descending line of resistance on the MACD. And it further highlights the need to have a few selling indicators, right? So we actually ended up having our blow off top a couple weeks after the MACD had intersected that descending line of resistance. And so that's why we're also relying on the relative strength index in this case. And we're also going to rely on the relative strength index we're going to get into shortly here on the monthly. But again, it further highlights the reason that we're using multiple topping signals to lead us feeling convinced that the top is either in or extremely close to being in for Bitcoin. Now, the first thing I would denote here is you can see clearly that every blow off top occurred when the MACD touched this descending area of resistance. Are you noticing a trend on some of these indicators? There's descending areas of resistance. Hopefully you're picking up on that. So the first way that we're going to fire here, we're going to look at the weekly, okay? We're first looking at the weekly because the premise is, and this is a basic premise that I speak to on my daily live stream, click that bell icon for all notifications, 
for some TA knowledge. I go live every day. A key foundational concept that I hit on within my daily live stream is once bullish momentum picks up and sustains itself on a lower time frame, it bleeds into the higher time frame. So before we ever consider looking at the monthly, we need to look at the weekly. That's our first thing to at least get us into the yellow category for the RSI MACD topping signal, okay? Now, on this weekly, the first thing I'm looking for is for the MACD to come up to this area and touch here. Not only that, but history tells us that when we top, you can see the RSI here. What does the RSI do? The RSI likes to get all the way up in between 90, well, 90 and above, right? So for the weekly to trigger, I need number one, the MACD to intersect this descending line of resistance, and number two, both. I need both. I need the relative strength index to hit 90 or above. Once that happens, I flip right over to the monthly. Now, we're already at a yellow indicator when that happens. Now, to turn it to a green sell signal, sell signal. We're at getting warm, but to get it to, to a sell signal, I'm only looking at the relative strength index on the monthly chart. And as you can see, once again, uh, it's funny how these continual things play out in the different charts. There's a clear descending area of resistance here. I have two descending areas of resistance. So really, depending where the MACD tops out at, and I have a whole range, this is a hypothetical range where Bitcoin, I'm expecting it to top. Topping anywhere between really May to February of next year. Because again, it's so less important, guys, that we figure out, I think people are really going to be mistaken if they're trying to time this market based on a, a timing angle or a price angle. They're waiting for a certain price or waiting for a certain time period. Guys, we're using topping signals, okay? Convergence on historically significant topping indicators. That's what we're doing here. And so this is theoretically where we'll top, but I'm looking for the ultimately for this relative strength index to intersect with these descending areas of resistance here. I've drawn out a hypothetical box of where I think it'll go. But once the RSI hits this box here, that is when that sell signal is going to be triggered on the monthly. And we're going to take topping signal indicator number five, which is the RSI MACD that we're speaking to. We're going to flip it from yellow getting warm to green sell. And Bitcoin topping signal number six, my friends indicators. I am subscribed to both Tony the Bull BTC and Tech Dev 52 newsletters and premium services with their custom indicators in TradingView. From Tony, it's the raging bull in particular I'll be paying attention to for a topping signal. And with Tech Dev 52 in particular, it's his oscillator indicator. Now, if you want more information on that, you can look at the URL here for TechDev52. You can sign up for his newsletter. We have Coin Chartist. Tony is Tony the Bull BTC is the CEO of Coin Chartist. You can also reach out to him at Tony the Bull BTC. I've had him on this live stream a couple times on X Twitter. Now, with that being said, how are we actually going to use this information in the Excel spreadsheet to benefit our sell strategy? And this is where it becomes subjective. Based on your risk tolerance level, if you have three green flashes, four green flashes, or maybe a three green and one yellow, I'll get into the yellow indicator, three green and one yellow, you begin to scale out, right? The idea is not to necessarily wait for all six to flash, although if all six flashed, that would be more statistically significant. But that point is up to you, how risk averse you want to be. Now, how will we actually use this? Well, when the indicator, the associated indicator, for, say, for instance, the Pi cycle flashes when the slow period moving average, it's now touched the, fa uh, the fast period moving average has now intersected the slow period moving average, right? We would put this from a do not sell over here to a sell. So I would literally just put this in here. And I would delete this. So now we have one trigger, right? If for the RSI MACD, okay, the weekly flashes, but the monthly has not flashed, then we're putting an X there. If both flash, then we are putting an X here. Same with the friends indicators. If one of my friends has their uh, topping indicator flash, that gets a yellow. If both flash, that gets a green. So again, depending on what your risk strategy is, maybe you get a scenario 
where you have something like this and the peel is still red and you have a yellow here, I mean, how much are you exiting the market if you got four out of six flashing green? One is yellow, meaning one of my friends has their indicators flashing and there's only one indicator missing. And I think this further also highlights the importance of using more than one topping signal. It is going to be proven to be a huge fa fallacy and ultimate hubris in the market. And I've, I've seen this conjecture if you're just relying on the pie cycle. The pie cycle will not endlessly work till the end of time, okay? So introducing six historically significant statistical data points should leave us feeling so much more convicted. We've made it simple, we've kept it to six, but we have far more than just one, which is not a large enough sample set, especially with how immature this market is. Guys, if you found this content helpful, I really hope that you appreciate to choose to engage with me and drop a comment, share your feedback, hit that thumbs up button, and make sure you click that bell icon for all notifications to know when I go live each and every single weekday for my daily TA live stream, all in the charts. And until next time, let's all spread awareness. Let's carry the education forward. So what you gonna do, God dollar, or crypto bulldog, and his crypto maniacs, and the entire cryptocurrency market run wild on.